Now we can go to the ceremony in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Um, today is Pentecost, so I'm supposed to speak about the Holy Ghost, but I will not. Sorry. I'll speak about something that is worse than the Holy Ghost. Anything whatsoever, because the Holy Ghost is God. So it's most perfect and good. So anything else, it's far worse than him. Now I'm talking about the Pope. <laughs> <coughs> Not directly, but about a document that is coming into action today. That is a document about apparitions. Last week we were talking about miracles, if you remember. Well, today we continue somehow with apparitions. The document is called Norms for Proceeding in the Discernment of Alleged Supernatural Phenomena. That's the name. So, in the past, when the Church was dealing with apparitions, there was a procedure to follow. I'm not going into this in detail. What I say to you is, at the end of this procedure, the Church in the person of the local bishop, most often, would say one of these three things about an apparition and the message connected. Either it is not supernatural, and that means that it comes from the devil or from human beings that made it up for their own reason. <coughs> it's not supernatural. So don't even listen to it. Don't even talk about it. Don't even read about it. It's a joke. It's evil. It is supernatural. But that means it comes from God. It might be Our Lady speaking, an angel, a saint, our Lord Jesus Christ. It comes from God. Supernatural means beyond created nature. So beyond this is only God. Created. So, if it is God, what it is said in this apparition is not wrong. There's nothing wrong in it. You can follow it. You can believe it. You don't have to. Because the apparition is not the gospel. The gospel, you have to believe it been preached by Jesus, written by the apostles, that is the, what is called the public revelation, and that is the object of faith. But an apparition, whatever it would be, approved as supernatural, is not gospel. You can't believe it if you want. It might help you, of course, in your struggle in this world, but you don't have to. And then there's a third choice. We don't know. The church would say, well, we don't know. If it is supernatural, it is not. So it might be Our Lady, it might, might not be Our Lady, for example. You can dismiss it with no problem. So these are the three choices, more or less, I simplify, that were there before. But everything has changed now. And I beg your forgiveness because it's going to be long and boring. But I have to say these things. So if you want to listen, you listen. Otherwise, you just fall asleep as he does. <laughs> <laughs> and you will not receive First Holy Communion. That is recorded. <laughs> I can check later. He wakes up. Now, today, this new document is in force. And they start by saying it's a longish document that you can read if you wish. I just read from it. In the past, in the past, the Holy See seemed to accept that bishops would make statements such as 
one cannot doubt the reality of this. In the past, the Holy See accepted that the bishop would say, one cannot doubt. Of course, because if the Holy See accepted the bishop saying, this is supernatural, you cannot doubt that Our Lady spoke. You might dismiss it and say, I don't care. But she spoke. So they say, well, in the past, they used to do this. But the problem is that these expressions conflicted with the Church's own conviction that the faithful did not have to accept the authenticity of these events. So they say, well, in fact, the Church thought that people don't have to accept the authenticity of these events. But if the bishop said, one cannot doubt, it looks like it's contradictory. But is it contradictory? Is it true that the Church says you don't have to accept the authenticity of these events? Because these are the words of Pope Benedict XIV speaking about approved apparitions. Although an assent of Catholic faith may not be given to revelations thus approved, still an assent of human faith may made according to the rules of prudence is due to them. For according to these rules, such revelations are probable and worthy of pious credence. The Pope says, of course, whatever these revelations say is not faith, is not the gospel. You don't believe in them as if you are believing in the divinity of Christ and the most holy trinity in the immaculate conception of Our Lady. But you believe of human faith as you believe as, for example, Caesar conquered the Gauls. You believe that. You weren't there. Someone else is telling you. And you believe of human faith. You don't question that, saying, no, Caesar didn't do that. He never even existed. You don't do that. You believe. But your belief is not as high and strong as the one that says, I believe in Jesus Christ being God and man at the same time. You see the difference? I hope you do. This is what the church was teaching before. But I keep reading for you because it's getting worse and worse. The actual procedures followed by the dicastery, so the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith in the past, even in recent times were still inclined toward the bishop making a declaration that the event was supernatural or not supernatural. So this has been happening until now that the Vatican allowed Bishop to say, this is supernatural, this is from God, this is Our Lady speaking to us. But now, so much that some bishops insisting on being able to make a positive declaration <coughs> of this type, they say, oh, some bishop thought that they could say this is supernatural. But of course they could. It was given to them by the church, that kind of power. But let us continue. These expressions effectively oriented the faithful to think that they had to believe in this phenomena, which sometimes were valued more than the gospel itself. See, they say, the problem is that people started believing this apparition more than the gospel. And that is true. That is true. The people believe apparitions more than they believe the gospel. But why so? Why so? Because they were not told that they should not believe apparitions more than the gospel. 
Because people are like you. You are people. I think so. You look like people. Anyway. You are people. So people like you started believing that apparitions that they liked were more important than the gospel. But how is it, how is it possible? Just think about it. If you try, it's easy enough. You sit there and you listen to me. Or sleep. But if you listen to me, you say, well, he's a priest, and I must know better. It's telling us what the church is teaching. I just read it to you from Benedict XIV. And you say, well, he must know better. He even quoted the Pope. They must know better. So I have to believe this. If the priest were teaching you that revelations are not more important than the gospel, and you believe them as you believe that Caesar conquered the Gauls, but not as you believe that Jesus is God himself, you would learn it. And then you would face these apparitions, saying, well, it's not the gospel. The problem is not in you, people. The problem is in the priests and the bishops who stopped teaching the right doctrine. They just stopped. And so what do you do, people? Well, you do what you think is right. You are impressed by this apparition that corresponds to all your expectations, so you believe it. You might have never read the Gospel. You might have never heard of the Ten Commandments, because if you're brought up in the Novus Ordo. But you like this apparition, so you believe it. More than the Gospel that you don't know, and the Ten Commandments that you've never heard of. But the priest, if they don't teach you, how can it be your fault? It's the priest's fault, the bishops, the Pope. But with the new norms, we are proposing a procedure that is different from the past. There you are. With the new norms, we propose something new, different. Why? Because we can't teach you. What's the point in teaching you? No. You don't want to be taught. You just want to go to Mass, hear in the beautiful hymns, or whatever else you, you go for mass for, to Mass for. And then you want to go home and watch football, or go drinking, whatever you like. That's what you want to do. You don't want to be taught. So says the Vatican. So because we don't want to teach you, and you don't want to be taught, we just change things to make it easy. Now, apply this to the Latin Mass, the Latin Mass that we say. Nobody understands what is said, unless did you study Latin? Has any one of you studied Latin sufficiently to understand what I'm doing and saying? I don't know. Maybe I don't say no because otherwise it looks like maybe you're all doctor in Latin and Greek. But imagine a congregation where nobody that did that. You don't know what I'm saying. If I don't tell you what I'm saying, if I don't explain what the mass is, what happens during the mass, you don't know. So, should I tell you, or should I just change the mass <coughs> to make it easier? This is what they did. They just changed the mass. They stopped telling you what it is about. They changed it. Oh, now you know what's going on, because the priest faces you constantly. He speaks in your own language, so unless you sleep again, you know what is going on. We are supposed to, but then in fact people have no idea anyway. Because we don't want to teach you, says the Vatican, we change it. And we have not even touched the things that have been changed. Listen to this. As a rule, 
these potential conclusions that I spoke about do not include the possibility of declaring that the phenomenon under discernment is of supernatural origin. This, that is, affirming with moral certainty that it originates from a decision willed by God in a direct way. So from now on, from now on, we are no longer telling you that this apparition is <coughs> from God. Do you hear that? From now on, we are no longer telling you that Our Lady is speaking. This is not little thing. Because if they cannot say from now on into the future that is Our Lady speaking, how could they have said from now into the past that Our Lady was speaking? Are they not supposed to have the same power from the beginning until the end? Are these men of the church, are they not supposed to have the same powers granted to them by God himself from the moment the church has been established until the end of times? If they could tell us that was our lady in Fatima a hundred years ago, why cannot they tell us from now on into the future that is our lady speaking in another appreciation? If they cannot tell us one from now on into the future, how could they have told us about the past? And they say it themselves. Moreover, it should be noted that reaching a declaration affirming the supernaturalness of an event by its very nature not only requires a suitable amount of time to carry out the analysis, but can also lead to the possibility that the judgment of supernatural today might become a judgment of non-supernatural years later. And precisely this has happened. So they tell you what is supernatural today in a few years might not be. So Our Lady in Fatima has been declared supernatural, but it might not be. Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of La Salette, or any other apparition you can think about. It might have been, might not have been. Because everything is changeable in the mind of these modernists. There's nothing that is stable that lasts forever They've changed our faith from its roots. Today is today. Yesterday was yesterday and tomorrow is tomorrow. And things can change from yesterday to today, from today to tomorrow. It was our lady yesterday. She's not today. She might be tomorrow. We don't know. We are not going to tell you. We, the church, entrusted by God with all those charismas to save the soul and bring on the gospel forever until the end of times. And it's not finished yet. Today, they keep saying, today, we have come to the conviction that such complicated situations which create confusion among the faithful should always be avoided. We're not going to tell you if it's Our Lady because if tomorrow we find out she's not, it's complicated, it's confusing. We don't want to. We don't want to confuse you because we care about you. It's all about you. Whatever is there on the cross, whatever she's doing there, they're, they're happy in heaven, they're happy. But you, we care about you. 
is what they do in this new religion. Yeah? But listen to this. Most of the shrines that today are privileged places of popular piety for the people of God have never had an official declaration of the supernatural nature of the events that led to the devotion expressed there. So most of them, the shrines around the world, built because of extraordinary events happened there, well, they have no declaration of supernatural event. But churches have been built there. The bishops have given permission to build a church for that devotion. That's the approval. No, no. Listen to this. Rather, the sensus fidelium intuited the activity of the Holy Spirit there. They say, is the people of God with their sensus fidelium means that the feeling that they have there inside, they know what is Catholic and what is not, they detected that the Holy Spirit was working. And I can even say, yes, but are we talking about people who were instructed in their faith? Are we talking about people who knew their catechism by heart like this? People, some of whom could not even read, but knew the catechism like this? Because, I mean, you're all young. <laughs> but your parents your grandparents they knew their catechism no? by heart no problem, some of them couldn't read how was it possible that they knew the catechism? because they were instructed in the faith they were instructed in the faith and by that instruction they knew what was Catholic and what was not they knew it oh this other seems no, no, this couldn't be Catholic they would have said it because the faith, the doctrine was there, rooted inside them. They knew it. But what about the people today, after 50 years of nothing? What kind of sensus fidelium is in them? What kind of knowledge of the faith is in them? to determine that something is Catholic from the Holy Ghost and something is not Catholic from the Holy Ghost. You tell me how these children that one day will be adults who go to First Holy Communion without even knowing who Jesus is, without even knowing their prayer, how can they one day discern what is from the Holy Ghost and what is not? If that were true years ago, that the people knew what was Catholic and what was not, is it not true anymore? So whatever happens in the future, an apparition of the future, are we supposed to rely on the sensus fidelium of the people of today who have no faith whatsoever? They might have the faith in the sense that they believe in something, they would believe in God and everything that the church teaches if only they knew. But nobody is there to teach them. How can we rely on their judgment? Just think about it. Think about it. About the consequences of these words. So they say... There are six decisions that can be taken at the end of this new process. The word says is not supernatural. The other five are <coughs> shades. The best being, whatever is said, does not go against faith and moral. They don't tell you if it's Our Lady, an angel, a saint, God himself. They don't tell you. They just say whatever is said doesn't go against faith and morals. But then I could say these things. 
I can tell you things that don't go against faith and, mo- against faith and morals. But I know Our Lady and I wish I would know the lot of <laughs> I come on the best they can tell you is that this message doesn't go against faith and morals. But let me read this to you. This is one of the decisions that they can take. There's a Latin word that says curator. That's the name of the decision, curator. And they explain this way. While various uh, or significant critical elements are noted, listen, Various and significant elements are noted. Significant critical elements. At the same time, the phenomenon has already spread widely. And there are verifiable spiritual fruits connected to it. In this situation, a band that could upset the people of God is not recommended. Did you hear that properly? So they say there are critical elements, even significant. So there's problems there. But it's spread all over. It's already gone. And people like it. There's fruits there. People go to Mass. They say the Rosary. They go to confession. There are critical elements, of course. There's heresy or something. But uh, the people go to Mass. They get confessions. They say the Rosary. They, They seem holier. They like it. Well, a band that could upset people of God is not recommended. So we don't ban it. There are critical elements, but we don't. Do you understand this? What does it mean? That a revelation, an apparition, with critical elements that are significant, could be kept, (coughs) and people allowed. Sure, They say the bishop should not encourage this. But they cannot be, they they don't suggest to ban these devotions to these particular apparitions. It means that they care much more about how people feel than the truth itself. (coughs) It's not about Our Lady, it's not about our Lord Jesus crucified. (coughs) who died for us. It's not about them. It's about you. You like to go there. You like to go to that special place where prayers are said, where masses are celebrated, where rosaries are said constantly, confessions are heard, where also you can redo your teeth and so on, because it's cheaper. (laughs) Sure, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, there are critical elements, they are significant, but you like it. So we don't ban it. Are not these critical elements going to destroy the souls of people? We don't care because (coughs) you like it. So my friend, this is the new way. And I'm sorry that I've been very long But I wanted to explain it to you. To show you that this church cannot tell you anymore if Our Lady speaks. They can't tell you. They don't want to tell you because they don't want to make a statement that lasts forever. They do not want to bind your belief to anything anymore. That's what they want. Believe whatever you like. If you feel well with it, that must be good. Even if there are critical elements, significant and various, it doesn't matter. We don't care about God and truth, we care about you. That's the new church. That's the church that people go to every Sunday, every day, somewhere, <coughs> pious people. This is the, these are the priests that the bishops they listen to 
who do not care about really the truth. They care about how people feel. So if you go to those churches <coughs> and you're happy there, that's important. That's what matters. They don't have to teach you. They just change the way they do things. So you're pleased even more. You like rock music. The Christian rock, whatever it's called that thing. You like it. Well, we give you a church where you can get that. It doesn't matter if it's Protestants or whatever it is. It doesn't matter if you like it. But what about God? This church that they are proposing to you is about men, not about God. And what I find even like the cherry on top of this thing is that I was listening to this part of it, um, conference that was given by the Cardinal who proposed these documents to the world. Well, he used a swear word. It's unbelievable. It used a swear word. I mean, everyone swears, no? Of course, yeah, you're saying yes. We <laughs> <laughs> heard your confession. <laughs> you, you hit your, your hand or something with, with a hammer. and uh, So that happens. But he thought about it. In a serious discourse, he was explaining something on theological matters, and he used the swear word a cardinal of the Roman Catholic Church in the Vatican itself explaining a document signed by the Pope to the world, he used the swear word. Look, I'm not the most Puritan of all, don't worry, but there are situations you cannot just do these things. It can't be, right? It can't be justifiable. I'm sorry. This is that church. That is the church the Catholic Church today, represented by these people that say, we're no longer able to tell you Our Lady spoke. We cannot discern if it's God, if it's not God. We can't. Can you, do you realize this? The Church of God, the Church of God, created by Jesus Christ himself, granted powers that are extraordinary, for the only purpose of the glorification of God and the salvation of souls until the end of times, these men with these powers no longer can tell you if it's God speaking or not. There you go. It is serious. This is why I couldn't speak about the Holy Ghost. I'm very sorry for that. And I had to speak for hours about this issue because you need to know. You need to know. Whatever you hear from them, is something that is good today is bad tomorrow. The bishop is telling you you are disobedient. The priest is telling you you are not Catholic. You are going to that priest. He's not even a good priest or a bad priest. Well, that is good today. is false tomorrow. In your church, this is what you tell them. In your church. You might be right today, but you might be wrong tomorrow. And you might have been wrong yesterday. They are self-destructive. The same way that we were talking about last week about the new ideas in this world. They are self-destructive. Because they all come from the devil. Sorry people. They all come from the devil. And the devil brings destruction. Even in itself. There's no order in hell. Just chaos. And this is what they are bringing into our faith and our religion. So now tell your priest, then the bishop, the honorable bishop, and so on. You tell them, you can't even say if it's God speaking. How on earth am I supposed to believe when you say that what I'm doing is not Catholic? You have it all. They give you the power to answer back to them. Thank God that you can see and you can hear, you have your ear and your eyes to see. Thank God, because many can. <coughs> and they are following these people who cannot even tell them that it's God speaking and our Lady leading them to the truth. Amen.